In a previous video, I showed you how to use Adobe Arrow to turn a Photoshop file into a three-dimensional augmented reality project. This time, we are going to dive much deeper to see how to combine Illustrator files and Adobe Stock 3D models in Arrow to create an exciting, interactive AR scene. So this time we are in Illustrator and I'm going to show you the two ways of exporting files and preparing them for Adobe Arrow to create augmented reality scenes. So one of them is that you create a multi-layered file and unfortunately you can't directly import Illustrator documents into Arrow. So what you need to do is to set up your layers in Illustrator and then export them as a Photoshop file. So there's always this additional step that unfortunately you need to do, but it's not really causing much issues. You can still have Illustrator layered files imported into an AR scene. In this case, I have my original piece here, which is by the way, an illustration that I showed in a tutorial. The link is in the description below. So how to create this vampire character, you can learn from that video. But this time I prepared a separate file for the backdrop and a separate file with just the character. Now for the backdrop, you can see my layers here on the right. I have the pumpkins in the foreground. Then I have the bats, then the castle, with all the details around it, then the moon, and then the sky in the back. It's important to set up your layers in a way that the topmost layer is going to be the closest to you in your 3D view inside Adobe Arrow. So once you create the separations between the layers, the layer on top is the closest to you. So in this case, that will be the pumpkins. Now all of these will be rasterized once they are in Arrow, but what you need to do if you want to keep a multi-layered file and import it into Arrow is to go into the file menu in Illustrator and choose export, export as, and from the format, you just have to find Photoshop. So that's going to be the PSD file. Now you can still open this up in Photoshop and do some adjustments if you want, but this will be ready to be imported into Arrow. You just have to make sure you can access it from the app. So I normally would save it into the Creative Cloud files. Now I'm going to show you with the other file, which is just a single layer. I don't need additional layers in this case. You best use an SVG file format. So you don't have to save this as a PSD. It's better to go into File, choose Save As, and save it as a scalable vector graphic or SVG. So all you have to do is to choose this. And then again, the same here, you have to save it into a folder which you can access from the app. I recommend using the Creative Cloud files. Now in this project, apart from using Illustrator assets, I would like to also incorporate a couple of 3D models. The best place to look for compatible 3D objects is Adobe Stock, where you just have to select 3D from the left, and then we can type in something, let's just say pumpkin, and then you get the results of all the different variations of 3D objects. You can find really complex ones and more simple ones, but you can see also that I already licensed one of these. So this is the one we will be using. And I also downloaded another asset, uh, Tombstone, which you will see soon once we get to the app. Now, when it comes to working with 3D objects, you also need to do an additional step using Adobe Dimension. So here you just have to start a new document and then you have to place in the object that you downloaded either from Adobe Stock or if you have a 3D model that you created somewhere else, you can import it into Dimension. So in this case, I'm just going to drag and drop the pumpkin in here and we can zoom a little bit closer so we can have a better look at it. So there it is. Now I am going to go to the file menu and choose export selected for arrow. That's the option that you need. And then here you just have to say export again and choose a folder. Now, once again, I would use the Creative Cloud files for it. And I just wanted to show you that the resulting file format will be GLB. So this is a special 3D file format that compresses all the information for the 3D model and the additional materials and it's supported by Adobe Arrow. So once you save that into the Creative Cloud files, then you don't have to worry about it. It's going to work perfectly. So now that we have everything ready, it's time to jump into Arrow. So I'm going to fire up the app and I will start a new document. As soon as you have a new document, 
the first step you have to do always is to scan for surfaces. So you can see that in this case, I'm using a desk and I intentionally put a couple of objects on the desk and made sure that there is enough light in the room so the app can find the surfaces easier. So this little grid is just slowly building up here and I want to make sure I cover the whole desk area, which is pretty much done at this point. So that will look fine. Once you're happy with the surface, you just have to tap somewhere in the middle and that just secures it and saves it. So once you see the little hexagons, that means that you have the surface. Now, the first object that I'm going to place in is the backdrop. So remember this was created in Illustrator, but then convert it to a PSD file to make sure that we have all the layers available. So I'm going to scale it up nice and big. Then that's one of the amazing things about AR that you're not restricted with size. You can make it as big as you want. It can cover even a, the whole wall if you are outdoors, especially. But I think this is a nice sized backdrop. So now I'm going to add some depth in it by using layers and then increase the Z offset. So that you will see it will increase the distance between the layers. So we start to create some sort of depth in the backdrop. I don't want to make it too big because I have a lot of other objects that I need to place in front of this. But going closer, you can already see that we can go behind the castle. We can uh, move around and it already feels quite nice the way it is. Now, one thing that I noticed with layers, some layers, not all of them, like the castle looks fine, but with the pumpkins, there's a a little bit of um, noise around the edges. So this is, I think, is the compression of the layers that's causing it. So again, with the vampire, that SVG file that we prepared, will show a little bit more of this artifact around the edge. This is not ideal and not great. You might be able to get around it with using a certain file sizes or maybe certain file types, but I just couldn't really find out what was causing it. So at this point, I was actually okay with it. But again, when I zoom closer to the vampire, you will see it around the ears and uh, the edges. Once again, it's not a big deal, but obviously it would look much better without it. So hopefully either there will be an improvement in how the compression is handled inside Aero, or there will be a better guide on telling us how to do the compression ourselves. So you can see if I zoom a little bit closer, around the edges, both on the pumpkins and the vampire. It's not great, but it's not that bad either. So of course, when you import the separate element, so in this case, the vampire separate from the background, that means it's easier to move it around in 3D space. You can move it around without any restrictions. Now, the next element that we are placing in is one of the 3D models that we got from Adobe Stock. And this time it's the pumpkin. So at the moment, it's a little bit too big. So I'm going to scale it down. The good thing in Arrow is that you can easily manipulate and change any of the objects that you placed at any time in your scene. So I am just rotating with gestures and uh, making this smaller. But what I love is the drop shadow or cast shadow on 3D objects. So that looks brilliant in this case as well. It's very convincing and it feels great to move around this 3D object. Now I have also another file saved through a dimension into my Creative Cloud folders. And this is the Tombstone. So another Adobe stock asset. Now these are assets that you need to license. So if you want to get them, you need to pay for them. You need to use one or two credits depending on whether it's a standard or a premium asset. But luckily, Arrow has a lot of free assets already included in the starter pack. And I'm going to show you a really cool one. We will add that next. So. Here is the tombstone again, scaled down and rotated in the composition. I think this is going to look good. And you can see it's quite detailed. It has more detail than the pumpkin, I feel. And also the textures are really good. So it just feels great to be able to move around uh, 3D objects. It's even cooler than just having these flat uh, graphics from Illustrator or Photoshop. The next object that we are going to place in will be an element from the starter pack, so another 3D model. 
So again, for this to be added, I just press the plus sign at the bottom, but now choose starter assets. And this particular one is under plants and it's a dead tree. Again, perfect for this Halloween theme. So I'm going to make this bigger. This tree looks like it's something Tim Burton uh, would have in his films. So this is brilliant. I made it quite big and you can see also it has a nice car shed already. Just going to position it a little bit closer in the background. I like to have an overlap between the items and it looks great. I, again, 3D objects probably work best in AR projects, but um, I think a combination of 2D and 3D assets can still look really good. And there's another asset, again, from the starter assets under animated, there is this owl, which not only is in 3D, but it also can have an animation assigned to it, which we will see soon. Now, this size is probably a little bit too big for our owl. So I think we can make it smaller and probably make it sit atop the tombstone. So I'm just going to drag it up, by the way, with three fingers sliding up and down, you can change the vertical position. So I think that is quite good. I'm just going to align it a little bit more. Let's just take a closer look. Now, here is an interesting part, adding the interactions and animations. So first, I'm going to start with the pumpkin. I select it, choose behaviors, and then add a trigger, in this case, touch trigger, which means that if someone touches it, it starts a certain action. And in this case, I'm going to choose a spin action. There's lots of options for this, but I'm just going to stick with the default settings. So it works really well by default. And if we want to see how it works, we can test it out in the preview mode. But before we do so, let's add the action on the owl as well. So once again, it's a behavior. Again, set off with a touch, but in this case, I'm going to use the animation. And because this asset was already created with an animation, it was set up for arrow, it's going to work already. For the vampire, I'm going to use a different type of action. This will automatically start at the beginning of the project and it's called aim, the actual action itself. So aim means that it's going to follow us around from the beginning of the whole project when the project starts. So you can see when I switch to preview and I move around with the camera, the vampire is already following us around, which is quite cool because we can't see exactly whether it's 3D or 2D. It's always following us and it's a bit creepy as well at the same time. If I touch on the pumpkin, it does the spin. And if I touch on the owl, it does its cute animation. So it tries to fly up and then looks around, turns its head and then goes back to the original state. So this works really well and it feels like it's nicely grounded on the tombstone as well. So that's all the interaction that I wanted to add, but I also wanted to show you that you can share these projects and create links for others to experience it. So it creates a cloud document and then the final result when you get it, you get the link and then you can easily share that. But you can also export your project into these file formats, which you can use in other 3D applications. So that is also useful to know. You can also record videos while using arrow in preview mode. You just have to simply press the record button at the bottom. And of course, you can also just simply take pictures of your 3D scene at any point. Now, also, I just wanted to show you that every project that you build in Arrow is saved and you can easily continue working on it or just simply bring it up in a new environment. So if you open an existing document, this is how it's going to start. So in this case, the project we just created, I'm going to open it up. And first, again, we have to find surfaces and you can see once there is a place to put down all the elements, we can just tap on that surface and everything is there the way we set it up. So it should remember exactly the relation between the elements, the scale of each of them, and also all the interactions and animations that we assign to them. And here is the final result again in landscape format, just so you can see it better. And from above, you can see how these 2D assets and 3D models are combined into one nicely integrated composition. So we can move around a bit here. It just feels really great. So I highly recommend to check out this app and build an AR scene yourself, because until you try it, it is really hard to imagine the actual feeling that you get when you can set things up in this virtual space. 
Thanks a lot for watching. Like and share this video if you enjoyed it. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell icon to get notified whenever we release new videos. Click on the link on my right and start your membership today to get access to over 200 hours of training courses and personal mentoring by me and my team of creative professionals. Have fun learning guys and I will see you in the next one.